Hey, hello, this is Mr. Potler, and we are going to be learning a little bit about ecology. So to start off, um, ecology is kind of synonymous with nature and what happens there, and let's get a little bit more in depth, I guess. Ecology, the technical definition of ecology is the study of how living things interact with each other and their environment. So if we break that down a little bit, Okay, hopefully you know that ology is what? Yes, the study of. So that's the ology. The eco, the ecosystem, we'll be talking about that. So living things, that's pretty important there. Lots of living things, plants, animals, uh, plenty of other things there. Um, how they interact with each other and their environment. So they interact with other living things and with their environment. Now, I think the key there is interact. Okay, what does that mean? What is to interact? Uh, believe it or not, you interact with your environment and with other living things all day. Uh, over at your locker, talking about the boy or the girl you like, you're interacting with somebody. You're talking with your, or you're yelling at your brother or sister, you're interacting with them. Um, you give your parents the silent treatment. That's still a type of interaction. Um, you're interacting with your environment when you're eating, when you're sleeping, whatever. That's interactions. Now, in ecology, the interactions are things like this. These are some examples. Um, an eagle interacting with its prey, in this case, some uh, fish. That's definitely an interaction. Not a good one for the fish, but that would be an interaction. Uh, interaction that's better for both, um, a bee and the flowers. Okay, they're interacting, getting the pollen from the flowers, and they're spreading that pollen around to other flowers to pollinate. Bees are very good for that. Uh, another kind of interaction, beavers interact with their environment. Um, this is more, they're going to be chopping down some trees, cutting down some trees, making their dam, and they also interact with the environment as far as what they do to the dam and to the, uh, the river that they're in. So lots of different interactions. It really, it could be so many different ways. Now, if we get a little bit more into the structure of ecology, um, we can start small. The smallest thing we can start with is an organism. So an organism is, this is about the simplest definition you're going to get, any living thing. Are you a living thing? You're an organism. So that's a good example, one living thing. Um, organisms, they're all over, so this should be pretty simple. Okay, bighorn sheep up there in the Rockies, that's an organism. Um, so just a single living thing, any of those fish, those are all different organisms, and there's plenty more organisms inside that water, microscopic and such. Uh, now, this rock, now is the rock an organism? If you've been paying attention, you would say no, because it's not living. Yes, not living. So the rock is not an organism, but you will notice that there are plants around the rock. That would be a bunch of different organisms. And even on that rock, this discoloration, that's actually lichen. And that is a living organism. It grows on the rock, and it's just the best place for it to live. This is kind of its habitat. So... There is a living organism in there, but I wanted to point out that it does have to be living. The rock itself is not for the boulder. So if we get a little bit bigger now, now population. You've probably heard of population, like how many people or how many whatever is in an area. It's kind of the same idea. Population is all the members of one type of organism or one species in a particular area. A species is a specific type of organism, so all of them make a population. So, could be like all those fish in the river, that would make a population. Uh, another example, okay, look at this, all these elk, okay, one of them would be an organism, but all of them, now we have ourselves a population. Now, we're talking all of them in a particular area, so we'd have to figure out what that area is, but in this case, that's population. I'm sure there are other populations in here. We could say the population of the uh, 
grass. I don't know what kind of grass this is, but the population of all that grass in that area, that's another population as long as it's the same type of grass. I'm sure there are other types of uh, bugs in there. You have the population of all the little beetles or all the little ants. Another example of population where people get confused would be something like this. So many different trees here, and my question is, are these trees part of a population? Okay. In fact, the answer is no. Okay. Many people would think they're all trees, they're all in the same area. That's true, but they're not the same type of tree. There are probably lodgepole pines here, blue spruce, ponderosa pines, Douglas fir. There's different types of trees. So if it's a different type, it's a different species, and that means it's a different population. So there is a population of lodgepole pine trees. You just have to figure out which ones those are. And a different population of ponderosa pines, different one of Douglas fir, things like that. So that can get a little confusing, but again, it has to be each different type of animal or each different species. Bigger than a population is a community. So a community, hope you're getting these definitions, would be all the different populations that live together in an area. So we have that same area. Okay, now again, who knows? We The area could be a certain national park. It could be a square mile or something, but it's a certain area. So the community, all the different populations. So now we're talking about, again, different populations. Now we're talking about a little of everything. So we're talking about the, all the elk and all those ants and all the, all the grass and all the trees um, and all the mountains. Wait a minute. Did you catch me on that one? Are the mountains alive? No, the mountains are not alive. A. The air, not alive. So we're only talking about the living thing. So anything living in the area we're talking about, that's your community. Okay, moving on, we can get even bigger than a community. Now it's hard to get bigger than a community because a community is everything that's living So in an area. So how do we do that? How do we get bigger than everything that's living? I bet you know. So first of all, the next step is we take the eco and we add system. Okay, eco system, eco system, ecosystem, yes, okay. So an ecosystem, all the living and non-living things in an ecosystem. So we took, in an area, excuse me, so we took all the living things and we added the non-living things. So now it's pretty much everything as far as all the matter, all the things that are there in an area. So if we look at back at this little picture here, so now we are talking about not just all of the elk and the beetles and the ants and the grass and the trees. Now we are also talking about the rocks that make up the mountains, the rocks on the mountains, the dirt, the air. Um, so a little of everything, really if we had water, I guess we have water in the snow, that would also be non-living. Water is not living. So that would also be part of the ecosystem, but not part of the community. So that's the idea. That's the biggest we get to until we get into biomes, but pretty much an ecosystem. Everything in the area, living and non-living. So again, in here, I mean, we could definitely see all the living and non-living as well. But I want you to think of is those four levels, again, organism, population, community, ecosystem. So let's take this next picture, and I want you to make a list of the things that you would include in each of those levels that wouldn't be in the next level. So here's a nice picture, Africa. So think about what in here would constitute an organism. Then what would constitute a population, a community, and finally an ecosystem. What could you add to the next category to get there?
All right, I'd say pause it, and this is the end. So hopefully you've learned something about ecosystems. Thank you for watching.